Welcome back to our continuation of our tutorial in Unity where we're creating an FPS um, and specifically we're going to create some ammo counters for all these different weapons and link them to our UI elements. So this is a pretty big video in terms of coding uh, because we're going to really overhaul how these weapons work. Um, but more importantly, we're going to have the ability for us to actually have ammo reloading, um, you know, magazine capacity, all of the stuff that you'd expect out of an FPS. So let's start. Uh, we're going to want to open up Visual Studio and kind of have our usual suspects open here. So I'm going to go into... Well, we're going to need Game Manager, the Weapon Controller, iWeapon, and our three weapons uh, ready to go. We're going to start in Game Manager uh, because this is the really the only script that's going to persist in between level loads. And so that would make sense for our ammo information to be stored here. So first up, I want to create an enumerator for our type of ammo. And an enumerator honestly can be thought of as a really fancy integer. Um, and we probably don't need it, but I think it's a really good opportunity for us to see where we could use something like this, especially um, in kind of configuring weapons. You'll actually see a lot of very useful things that happen with this. So I said it was a very fancy int. And what this is basically doing is giving us names for numbers. So for example, none is going to be equivalent to zero. Energy is going to be equivalent to one. Shotgun is going to be equivalent to two. Rocket is going to be equivalent to three. And so we're going to use these to access different pieces of a, a, an array of information. But the advantage is instead of the developer saying that the shotgun uses ammo type 2, they can just say that the shotgun uses ammo type dot shotgun. And that makes it a little easier to develop. Because um, like I said, it's really just a fancy integer, but eh. So let's create some variables for ammo. And this is going to be a lot of different variables. So I want to put it after spawn location, and I'll make a, ooh, that's a sum, summary, fancy. Um, we'll call this ammo variables. And these are still public, um, still game state variables. So I actually don't know if there's a subheader for this. Don't know. All right, so I want a string of what name these ammos are. Um, whether or not we end up using this a lot, I, I don't really know, but it, it could play a role in, you know, what we render to the screen versus what, what maybe messages appear for the player. So this is going to be called ammo name. And this is going to be equal to a new string that's equal to the enum dot, oops, enum dot get values uh, type of ammo type dot length. So it gets an array. This part get values, you can see that it returns an array. And we're just re requesting the length of that. So as we add to the enumerator, this will have a different size. Um, now, if we change it after the fact, you know how public variables are in Unity. Um, if we refresh the script, it should fix it. Um, all right, so now we're going to make an int for the ammo max. This is an important one. New int, and I'm just going to copy and paste this right here. We're going to make a float. Now, float seems kind of weird for ammo, but um, I was thinking that perhaps some things could use fractional ammo, like the chargeable blaster. It might use fractions of ammo. And so float might make more sense. 
And then I want some weapons to be able to regenerate their ammo. So this new um, array is for weapon types that can regenerate, such as the blaster. I want the blaster to recharge slowly over time uh, so that you can use it when you don't have any other weapons. <clears throat> so to also help with this, um, we're going to need a private float ammo tick. And that is going to track um, how much time has passed until we trigger the, the regen of ammunition. Now, one other variable that we're going to need is actually an incredibly important one. And this is a dictionary type. It's basically a map, if you're familiar with maps in Java. It's essentially a way to correlate two different data types the most common usage is like strings to something. So um, we're going to call this the data dictionary. And this is public dictionary string comma float called data equals new dictionary string comma float. So really what you can think of this as is an array that indexes with strings instead of numbers. So we can actually reference anything that we want to turn into a string. And that's going to be really powerful for storing information dynamically. It's almost like dynamic variable names. And we're going to use that to remember some things. And this is, you, this is the same data structure you'll want to remember. Like if you've hit a switch or if you've opened a door or if you've killed a boss or something, you'd probably want to put it in here. <clears throat> um, so uh, things that we need as we kind of continue looking through here we're going to need an update method because now that we are going to be tracking ammo we are going to need to um, cause the regen of ammo so private void update ammo tick plus equals time dot delta time and then so there's just a comment advancing time for if we um, to determine ammo regeneration so if the ammo tick is greater than one so every second Um, then ammo tick minus equals one. We don't want to cut off fractions of the second in case it went over by a tiny bit. Um, so then we want to regenerate our ammo. So we're going to loop through all of our ammo types. And we're going to say ammo at position I is going to equal the math float dot min of the current amount of ammo plus the ammo regeneration per second versus the ammo max for that value. So this is a way it takes the minimum of that. So let's say the max is 100. Um, when we add ammo, if we currently have 100 and we were to regenerate it by one, this, this value would be 101. The max is 100, and so it will choose the minimum of the two, and it will choose the max. So this is a way to kind of cap my ammo. That's a very effective way, and kind of a simple and clean way. Um, to facilitate using the dictionary, um, I'm gonna create another method here called public Floats get data. And I want it to return something very specific if, um, if it doesn't find it. <clears throat> so I'm going to if data, data does not contain key, 
I'm going to return float dot not a number. So if the key doesn't exist, instead of like no index found, or because you don't return negative one, because negative one could be a legitimate value, I'm going to return not a number. And so if I, re if I receive not a number, then I know that the key wasn't there. Otherwise, return the key. And another helper one, public void string key float value. Oh, this method is going to be called um, put data. And this is just going to be data at position key equals value. So it just makes it a little bit easier. We may never use this method. We might just manually assign it into the data, which would be fine. Um, other things that we need to do is we need to configure our starting ammo. So we can hit save on this. And now we're going to have to go edit the game manager to set up these, um, these arrays. So I'm going to minimize this, go back to Unity, let it compile its scripts, and then pop open Game Manager. And now I've got these new arrays here. And so this is the name of each thing. So this is just the none type. This is energy for the blaster. This is shells for the shotgun. And this is rockets. Now the max ammo. So I think figure for the none type, we'll just put negative one. For the max of the blaster, we'll put 100. For the max of the shells, we'll put 24. For the max of the rockets, we'll put 12. For the starting ammo, I'll start the blaster at full. Um, the shotgun, maybe we'll start it at like six, and maybe we'll start the rocket launcher at two, so that you kind of have to pick up the ammo. That, that, that ammo is kind of a rare thing. Now, the ammo per second, um, the only one that I want to regenerate ammo is the blaster. So I put a one there. If you wanted the other ones to regenerate ammo, you could change that and put, you could even put decimal amounts, because like I said, this ammo count is a float. And we're going to truncate the numbers as we display them. So if you have 0.9 of a shotgun shell, you don't have a shotgun shell. Uh, only when you hit three, would it? only when you hit that whole number would it count. Okay, so that sets all that up. Now, we probably should have done this in the last video. Um, but this is going to be going back to the weapon controller and binding the UI to all of these, to, to all of our UI elements. So we're going to go back to Visual Studio and we're going to go over to the weapon controller. So let's create variables for all of the different UI things that we might have. Um, I do need to include one more using, so I want to include using Text Mesh Pro. That'll make our lives a little bit easier. So after the crosshair, we need private Text Mesh Pro U GUI. This is the one for the. This is the actual Text Mesh Pro for the user interface, the, the, the graphical user interface. And then a bunch for all of the other um, bars. Oh, these are all images. Kind of like the autocomplete on that. Um, this is going to be ammo bar front and ammo bar back. We'll probably put the health bar. We'll work on implementing that once we put enemies in. 
Um, but the health bar will probably be handled inside of Game Manager because Game Manager is where the health is stored. So I'm not super wild about splitting it. Like half of the UI is inside of Weapon Controller and half of the UI is inside of Game Manager. Not, not, <laughs> but I think I'm a little too late to change. I, I've kind of committed to this setup. Um, so then inside of my start for weapon controller, I just need to attach all of these elements. So this is a little tedious, else if UI, and we might as well just copy and paste this, else if UI element name equals, and I believe it was called ammo count, and then we would set UI ammo text to the text mesh pro component, text mesh pro U GUI component. Copy that entire thing. And now we're going to get the reload back. Reload, ooh, this was reload bar back. And then we're going to attach reload bar back to the image. Do this for the reload bar front. And then do this for the ammo bar. So naming these was actually very um, important. And actually I need to double check to make sure that is called ammo bar. Um, it was called ammo bar. I mean, I guess we could edit our UI in here too. I forget how big it is. Holding shift while trying to use the thing. Let's see our wonderful uh, UI in action. Okay, back to Visual Studio. So this sets all these up. Now, we'll start playing with these as we start rigging up our weapons to utilize them. So in Unity, I'm actually going to turn off many of these things right now. So I'm going to turn off the ammo count. I'm going to turn off, and I'm turn, not turning it off at the top, I'm just turning off the image for both of these. And then I'm going to turn off the image for the reload bar. So we're gonna enable these as needed. So my UI is going back to being very plain right now. Uh, I don't have anything kind of in the corners. But we'll enable them as we go. All right, so let's do the blaster first. All right, so the blaster um, is, is maybe the simplest. So, well, I don't know, we're gonna be charging ammo, and so that's going to, I'm gonna have a cat on my desk. Sorry, Hammy. <laughs> oh, she was not happy about that. Um, okay. So let's start dealing with our ammo stuff here for the blaster. So let's start with instance variables. And the only thing we really need to do, oh, you're back, is add in a few things for the, what ammo type we're going to use. So underneath zoomed FOV, we want to have, we can make this another header too if we want. ammo settings. So public and the data type is actually game manager dot ammo type. And we'll, we can just call it ammo type. That actually will let the developer use a drop down box to select the ammo type. 
which is why we use the whole enumerator in the first place. Um, then we need a public int ammo mag size. We're going to set that to negative one. That's how much ammo is in a magazine for this weapon. We're going to use negative one to indicate that it does not use a magazine, so there's no reloading involved. Ammo cost per second. This is based on how, when we're charging it up, how much ammo will be consumed. And the ammo cost per shot. How much ammo will be spent whenever we attack with this weapon? So we will need to um, scroll down a little bit. And we're going to actually go to our fire one method. So in addition to being ready, we're going to also need to start addressing our ammo, do we have that ammo? And it's a little clunky to get our ammo data variable. So if you remember, game manager dot instance dot ammo cast to an int our ammo type, that's how we get our ammo. So if we have enough ammo to shoot our weapon, then we will allow this to happen. I am going to put this in my clipboard, so I'm going to hit Control C on this because we do use this command <laughs> quite a lot and I don't like typing it. All right, so if we're holding down the button, we're going to need to begin to consume ammo for a charge. <clears throat> so right after we calculate our charge, we can deal with ammo Amu, ammo for charging. So if our charge is less than our max charge time, then we want to consume ammo at that full rate. So we're gonna say ammo minus equals ammo cost per second times time dot delta time. And actually, this is a single line, so we don't really need the curly braces, but otherwise, the charge is full. So we want to burn some ammo keeping it charged, but not all the, the same amount. So my ammo will be minus equal ammo cost per second times time dot delta time times some kind of penalty. So it'll cost 20% of what we specified to keep it charged. Now, if we end up um, running out of ammo, so after the sound, we'll probably want to do this. So if our ammo is less than or equal to my ammo cost per shot, then we just want to immediately trigger the release of this weapon. So we'll do fire one up. And so that's if we're out of ammo, we're just going to end it. <laughs> we're just going to trigger the firing of our weapon. So let's deal with the consumption of the ammo when we actually fire the weapon. So most of this is pretty straightforward. The only thing we would have to do is right, right after the cooldown is consume ammo for the shot, which is just going to be our ammo type minus equal ammo cost per shot. And that's going to spend our ammo. And so that 
will work, but let's get some visual feedback so we can actually watch this um, and, and, and see what this is doing. So as we scroll down, this is going to be a get UI energy thing. So here we're going to set, we're going to return essentially the ratio between how much ammo I have. So get ammo type or get, get the amount of ammo I have divided by my ammo max. And the message that we would display would be using the name of it, we will round mathf.round to int. Well, do we want to round? Mm. Trying to think. It's a this weapon especially can have decimals. So let's just do round in my current ammo to, oh, I don't think this one has. No, oh, I guess we'll just use round. So there might be some wonkiness to the display, that's fine. I don't feel like doing some kind of like multiply by uh, 100 divide by 10 cast it back to an int divide by 10 again or whatever shenanigans we would need to do now this actually has one of the simpler initialize and uninitializes because we don't have like a magazine for this weapon um, this is going to be how we'll handle it so now we want to rig up the UI so that we can actually uh, see this information So we'll jump back over to weapon controller and under late updates is where we want to start displaying our, our, our stuff. So we want to actually just show um, that ammo bar. So if I'll make sure that I'm correct on this. Um, uh, what was that called? Weapon dot. So my current weapon's called weapon. Weapon dot. Oh, that's right. I'm going to need to get that as a reference. So it's probably easiest to do it at the start of late update. I weapon weapon equals current weapon dot get components I weapon. It's just easiest to do that because I'm going to be calling this a whole bunch so I'd rather just do it this way. So if weapon dot uh, Gets UI energy is greater than or equal to zero. Remember, we're going to return negative one if um, what we call it if we're not going to use the energy bar. So we would want to say UI underscore ammo bar back dot enabled equals true UI ooh, I should probably be careful about this um, I don't want this to flicker so we're just going to say greater than negative one UI ammo bar front dot enabled equals true. We want to turn off the text. So UI ammo text 
dot enabled equals false. We could still just bind the text anyway. So UI ammo text dot text equals weapon dot get ammo message. And that will then display this. So a couple things. Since this is utilizing these, we might need to wrap this in a null check. So if UI underscore ammo text is not equal to null and UI underscore ammo bar back is not equal to null and UI ammo bar front is not equal to null. And then we'll put all this inside of that. Now we could maybe make each each independently of these. So I'm just linking all three. If, if one of the three doesn't work, you just don't get any ammo display. You could probably have made each of these individually linked, but that's a lot of work. <laughs> okay, um, let's just enable the ammo text. Just it, It'll overlap and look kind of silly right now, but that's okay. So we'll hit save. And we're gonna go back to Unity, cross our fingers, and hope everything works. All right, so we'll hit play. And I pull out the blaster and disappointingly nothing happens. Okay, we can fix this. So it's possible that um, this should be true. The issue, the, I'm kind of surprised this isn't running because we should be getting a get UI energy. Oh, we didn't hit save. Wow, and I'm missing a semicolon. Just to add salt to the wound. I have no words. I'm a man who lives by his words, makes his living from his words, and I have no words for that mistake. I believe you call that a rookie mistake. Okay, oh, so I forgot to set the settings in Unity. So you can kind of actually tell that because it says none in the bottom right corner, which is actually important that I enabled that. Um, otherwise, it would have taken me a while to, to debug that. So my wanting to use the silliness of having that text actually saved me. So inside of the prefab for this weapon, we recently added more to it. So you can see that there's an ammo settings now. And so we want to select energy from that dropdown. Now we can play test it. And whenever I select the blaster, we get the, the text is working, but we didn't actually um, set up the fill amount. So let's, let's go fix that. That's going to be a Visual Studio thing. So right after here. UI ammo bar front dot fill amount equals weapon dot get UI energy. And now that we know this is working, I can turn off the text. I don't need to see that silly text. So we'll hit save, go back to Unity. Hit play. And now you can see that I have an ammo bar there. It depletes as I charge, it depletes rapidly. Then once it's fully charged, it kind of sits there. Now, I can't attack yet because I don't have enough for a full charge. And actually, even if I switch off the weapon, it should still continue to recharge because it's still running through. Now, it's not going to update that. So when I switch back to the blaster, it's going to jump drastically um, because these weapons aren't updating because they're returning a negative one for that ratio. So these aren't updating till I switch back to the blaster. Um, but if I keep it charged, notice that it's just instantly shot. 
So if you don't have enough ammo, it's just going to release the attack. Now one thing that I would like to do, but I, I think it would add an extra complexity, is putting a cooldown on the charge. So you have to wait a few seconds of not using the weapon for the charge to pick back up again. And I, in a lot of projects I tend to add that, but I feel like that adds unnecessary complexity. Uh, but if you feel like that would be good. So notice how it just triggered right when I was at the last about a, amount of energy. So this is pretty good. I'm pretty happy with how that works. Now we've got to do the other two weapons, but I think we can stop here for this video. And I'll do the shotgun and the launcher in the final video of chapter two. So I hope you're enjoying making ammo for weapons. Um, this is a really kind of cool way to remember data between scenes. And this is, as far as I can tell, a really, I mean, it's pretty close to industry standard. I, I think I've got, I've made a few mistakes and this is just reflecting on the project. Um, like putting all of the UI in one, in two places is not going to be good design. So, but keeping things to mostly two classes that manage stuff is a good design using a kind of inheritance based setup helps keep things consistent and easy to expand on. So there's some, some really good seeds in here from a programming standpoint. So thanks for watching and we will conclude our ammo chapter in the next video.